Servicio de Inmigración de los Estados Unidos deportó durante... This Border Patrol Processing Center there in McAllen, Texas is kind of the epicenter of all of this uh, family separation debate where the majority of these uh, families are being separated um, from their kids. Uh, and that's the place uh, which is often called the dog kennel. So uh, you see uh, these kind of chain link uh, fence rooms where people are kind of divided. The parents are put to one side, the kids are taken to another. That's really like a place where people pass through. It's not designed to hold people for a long time. So that's why they have the see-through kind of cages, if you will, where they put parents on one side, kids on the other, so that they can send them in different uh, directions. Kids go to the shelters. The parents are often you know, sent to federal court uh, to face the criminal charges. So the first one is that we had worked with the police, um, this is for weeks and weeks and weeks, and they were very aware, and we marched on the sidewalk, we, this could, is something that we worked out with them. Um, however, we felt that um, they were very um, uh, difficult, and in, 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 this is the most difficult process we have ever gone through with police. Um, but the permit, we had a full permit until 9 o'clock, I want to emphasize that. We're just starting to kind of get a first uh, glimpse into some of these uh, shelters for detained immigrant uh, children. 
uh, kids that are being separated from their parents at the border. Um, at first glance, they are quite different than uh, detention centers for uh, adults. I had a chance to visit uh, the largest of these shelters. Um, it's a former Walmart, uh, if you believe it or not, in uh, Brownsville, Texas, so very close to the border. Basically, there's almost 1,500 uh, boys who are being kept in this former Walmart. We don't know why it's only males or only females, only boys, only girls in some facilities. It seems up to the uh, nonprofits that run them, a uh, question of efficiency uh, perhaps, but uh, there's a lot of secrecy around uh, this whole process. It's very hard to get into the facilities and it's taken weeks, months even, for reporters to kind of get a glimpse at what it's like inside of them. It's a giant facility, um, but it's still pretty crowded. I mean, they uh, have repeatedly asked for kind of variances to increase the number of beds that they're allowed to put in there. They've added cots uh, to some of the rooms uh, in order to kind of expand the capacity. You see scores of kids uh, in the cafeteria kind of sitting down and, and eating. Um, it, it really, it's like a little city unto itself inside this Walmart. So there was a McDonald's there uh, previously when it was a Walmart. That Now that's a cafeteria that serves you know, 1,500 kids. So they have to do them in different shifts. There's counseling uh, facilities uh, or services inside there. There is soccer fields uh, in the back that are fenced in. So these kids are um, basically being held there. You also have kind of recreation rooms. Um, kids are able to play pool, play video games. Uh, there's classrooms. Uh, they do, uh, there's so many kids now that they have to do uh, schooling in two shifts. So really, uh, this facility, like many of them, are kind of filled to capacity. And that's why we're now seeing the administration talk about opening uh, more shelters for these kids on military bases. And uh, we just saw a tent city open up in Tornillo, Texas, uh, for some of these separated kids as well. Some lawmakers have kind of said that kids are being kept in cages. The reality is that at these ORR shelters, you know, facilities are, are are better than that. It wouldn't be fair to call them cages, rather they are certainly places where they're confined, they can't walk out the door, um, but uh, there are a lot of facilities provided for them, like I said. When I went, there were kids doing Tai Chi uh, with an instructor, um, so there's kind of a semblance of, of kind of regular life for these kids, but again, some of them have been separated from their parents uh, and are going through that trauma and other ones haven't you know, seen their parents in, in a very long time, so it's certainly not kind of regular life. Vice President Harris used her first appearance on the world stage to deliver a blunt message to migrants seeking to enter the U.S. illegally. Do not come. Do not come. If you come to our border, you will be turned back. The vice president's trip to the region is high stakes, not only for an administration facing intense criticism of border security, but also for her future political ambitions and her place in history as the first female vice president traveling abroad. I welcome showing anyone, whatever your race or gender, that you may be the first to do anything, make sure you're not the last.